Hi, I'm Crane. Before we dive into this video, I just wanted to explain why it's so damn long. So I was writing the script and kept adding every important moment from the game that I could remember and then did the fact checking right after. And as it turns out, there's a metric ton of story in this game. And since I want to do, do the game justice, oops, hit the mic, sorry, uh, this is what you're gonna get. And so, last time, I covered the majority of the story in Diablo 1, and now it's time for one of the greatest games of all time, Diablo 2. We left our beloved town Tristram as Diablo was slain by the warrior, and still unaware of what happened to Jastreth and Morena after Diablo's fall. According to Deckard Cain, there was a celebration following Diablo's downfall, and the warrior was there after having shoved the soul stone into his own forehead. However, in the middle of the night, the warrior disappeared, and soon, death followed. Demons from the deepest pits of hell rained down on the town of Tristram and consumed the town and all the people within. In another part of Sanctuary, we see an old, worn-out man in a sanitarium. His name is Marius. A hooded figure walks into his room and sits down in front of the only window inside. Marius looks up at him and sees none other than Tyriel, the Archangel of Justice. Marius begs for forgiveness, telling Tyriel that it was not his fault, it was the Wanderer. After Tristram fell and the warrior left, he traveled east, always to the east. He came to a tavern just to be able to sit down for a short moment, and suddenly the demons came. They set the tavern ablaze and murdered everyone inside, save for the warrior and you guessed it, a drunk Marius. The warrior, or as we now know him, the Wanderer, left through the flames and Marius followed, not knowing why, it was just something he had to do. They went further to the east and arrived at the Rogue Monastery, the gateway to the land of Aranok, a big desert. However, the Wanderer, carrying Diablo Soulstone, had to barricade the monastery to prevent anyone who would even attempt to stop him. Let's talk about the Lords of Hell for a short second. After the three prime evils were cast out by the four lesser evils led by Asmodan and Belial, Andoriel and Duriel started to distrust their brothers and realized that Belial had played Asmodan into starting what led to be the Dark Exile. And feeling that they couldn't trust their brothers, Andoriel and Duriel wanted to align themselves with the prime evils again. And as a favor to them, Andoriel would guard the monastery after the Wanderer had passed through. Back in Kandurus, five heroes arrive in a small rogue refugee camp. A barbarian, a paladin, a sorceress, an amazon, and a necromancer. They heard of the evil that haunted the lands of Kandurus and wanted to put an end to the madness. To be able to travel east, they had to perform multiple favors for the rogue camp's leaders, and one of the tasks has them putting down one of the former rogues. She goes by the name of Blood Raven, but was once one of their greatest fighters called Morena. When Morena returned, the leaders of the rogues could feel that she had been corrupted, and not long after, Andoriel turned her into Blood Raven. Morena is defeated, and so dies the rogue from Diablo 1. Back in the camp, the rogues ask the heroes if they could travel to Tristram and seek out Deckard Cain if he still lives. They enter Tristram only to be met by hordes of demons burning the town to the ground. They even find the town's blacksmith, Griswold, zombified as well as Wirt, the peg-legged boy's body. In the town center, they find Deckard Cain, alive, trapped in a cage. They free him and send him to the rogue camp. He is the key to defeating this evil, since he might be the only one with the information required to fully understand what's going on. Back in the sanitarium, Marius tells Tyriel that his traveling companions seem to never slow down, as if he was on a mission. He tells him how they found a tomb, and even though there was no light within, the Wanderer knew exactly where to go. He stops in the middle of a big chamber, screaming as his face deforms. Unbeknownst to Marius, the Wanderer was getting weaker as Diablo grew stronger within his mind. A doorway opens, and they enter. Meanwhile, the five heroes, with the information provided by Deckard Cain, have fought their way through the rogue monastery, knowing what's ahead of them, and as they enter the bottom floor of the catacombs, they face Andoriel, Maiden of Anguish. 
They managed to strike her down and open up the way to the east. However, since Andariel wasn't bound to a soul stone, her soul was banished to hell to be reborn. The five heroes travel to the town of Lutgolain, where they hear rumors of a dark wanderer traveling the desert searching for the tomb of Talrasha. Some of the townspeople assure the heroes they felt Diablo's presence as the wanderer traveled through not long before they arrived. Deckard Cain went with the heroes to Lutgolain and told them the story of Bale and Talrasha. When the Haradrim went to imprison the primevals, Bale shattered his soul stone before they could bind him to it. They still managed to capture him, but since the stone was in pieces, Talrasha, the leader of the Haradrim, offered himself to be Bale's prison. Tyriel, the Archangel of Justice, having the final say, agreed. And with only a small piece of the former soul stone, they quickly bound Bale to it and placed it in Talrasha's chest. And then they sealed the tomb shut, leaving Talrasha to literally fight his inner demons for centuries. The five heroes fought their way through the deserts and finally reached the Arcane Sanctuary, a dimension created by the mage Horazon, which served as a demon prison built to defend the world. And according to legend, which turns out to be true, Lutgalain was built over the portal. Inside the Arcane Sanctuary, the heroes fought waves of demons in order to find Horazon's journal, which in turn would reveal to them the true tomb of Talrasha. They see the journal on a pedestal, but before they can grab it, a corrupted and twisted summoner appears and attacks them. They quickly deduce that this is not the real Horazon, the creator of the Arcane Sanctuary, but someone who is driven mad with power. This is in fact Jasreth, the sorcerer from Diablo 1. After Diablo's fall, he went mad and started searching for ways to gain more power. He traveled to Lutgolain in search of the Arcane Sanctuary and actually found the portal. However, once he entered the portal, he opened a rift into the palace where the portal was placed, and out of it came hordes of demons, previously imprisoned within the sanctuary. Believing he could bend evil forces to his will, he didn't realize that this quest for power would ultimately lead to his death at the hands of the five heroes. The heroes came to the Canyon of the Magi in search for Talrasha's tomb, with the hopes of reaching it before the Dark Wanderer. Thanks to Horizon's journal, they knew which of the seven tombs was the right one and rushed through it to find the inner chamber and Talrasha. They came to a big chamber and went through the final doorway to Talrasha, but none of them were prepared for what they would face inside. Duriel, the Lord of Pain, and Dariel's twin brother. As it turns out, as punishment for playing a role in the Dark Exile, Duriel was stationed to guard the entrance behind his brothers. They defeated Duriel, but having realized this was a very bad sign for their mission, the five heroes rushed into the chamber where Talrasha was imprisoned, only to find Tyriel chained to a stone. Talrasha and Bael Soulstone were gone. Marius and the Dark Wanderer had entered the inner chamber of the tomb and found Talrasha, chained to a stone with the shard of the Soulstone glowing in his chest. The Dark Wanderer moved across the bridge like a phantom to set Bale free, but was interrupted. Tyriel intervened and a brutal fight between the two broke out. Marius could only stand there and watch them. But something spoke to him. It was Talrasha. He wanted Marius to free him, to remove the soulstone from his body and end his torment. While the Dark Wanderer and Tyriel were busy fighting, Marius carefully crossed the bridge and removed the soul stone from Talrasha's chest. Tyriel was unable to stop him in time and instead informed him of the terrible mistake he had just made. He also gave Marius a job. He had to travel to Karast and go through a portal to Pandemonium, travel to the Hellforge and destroy Bale's soul stone. Marius left the tomb alone and terrified, but he knew what had to be done. The five heroes had freed Tyriel, who had been overpowered by the Dark Wanderer and Talrasha and left inside the inner chamber. However, the Dark Wanderer and Talrasha were no more. They were now Diablo and Bale in human disguise, and they had to be stopped before reaching Mephisto in Karast. For if they reunite, they would rain unimaginable destruction upon Sanctuary with humanity's existence at risk. The five heroes informed Deckard Cain of their encounter with Duriel, his defeat, and how they had met the Archangel of Justice. Deckard Cain commended the heroes on their victory, 
over yet another great evil, but assured them that their greatest challenge was still ahead of them. However, he felt he had to see this through, and decided to join them on their journey once more as they set course for Karast. They arrived in the Karast docks via ship and were met with the sight of a town that had seen better days. Kane made himself at home and quickly started socializing with the locals, including Ashera, the leader of the Iron Wolves, and the famous demon hunter Natalia. Deckard Kane quickly learned of how, not long ago, Karast and its docks were beautiful and a sight to behold. But then Mephisto awoke. His soulstone was locked deep inside the Temple of Light within the city of Travancol. The Zakarum who guarded Mephisto's soulstone were led by a man called Kalim. Kalim was the highest divine authority of the High Council of the Zakarum. Once the others fell to Mephisto's influence, he alone remained on the side of the light. Mephisto, still imprisoned, was furious of how Kalim somehow could resist his dark influence and sent the other council members to kill him. He was slain and dismembered by his brothers, and his body was scattered throughout Karast. His successor was called Sankakur. Mephisto's plan all along was to corrupt the Zakarum from within, eventually corrupting the ones guarding him and convincing them to shatter his soulstone. Each of the priests drove a shard of the soulstone through their left palms, with the largest shard piercing the hand of the high priest Sankakur, who became his mortal host. Once he had amassed enough power, he struck, and Karast fell within moments. The heroes left the Karast docks and saw the Dark Wanderer. They ran after him, but once they got close, he laughed at them and disappeared. Before the five heroes could enter the Temple of Light in Travancol, they had to rebuild Kalim's flail. His heart, brain, and eye were the only parts remaining of the uncorruptible priest. Deckard Cain helped them fuse the body parts with a flail, creating the only tool able to destroy the compelling orb created by the Council, which was used to control the rest of the Zakarum faithful, and also sealing the entrance to the Temple of Light. The five heroes brought the flail to the compelling orb, and after having killed the demons formerly known as the Council of the Zakarum, they used the flail to destroy the orb, and entered the temple. Mephisto was within their reach, all they had to do was get there in time and hopefully before Diablo and Bale. They found Mephisto in the lowest level of the temple, surrounded by rivers of blood. In the fevered combat that followed, Mephisto tried to turn his foe's own anger and distrust against them. But despite the long hunt and many hours of battle, the five heroes defeated him and imprisoned his essence within his soulstone. Back in the sanitarium, Marius finally explains to Tyrl what happened and why he blames the Wanderer. As it turns out, Marius made it all the way to the Temple of Light and saw the portal to Pandemonium. In the middle of the big hall, he could see Mephisto standing right next to his two brothers. Talrasha, now Bale, and Marius' former traveling companion, the Wanderer. When the Wanderer and Talrasha had arrived at the temple, they released Mephisto and helped him possess Sankakur which means they arrived in Karast way before the five heroes did. Marius hid behind a pillar, watching the prime evils perform some kind of ritual. The wanderer's skin started to boil, and as the blood became too hot, moving through his face, it popped holes in his skin, and blood started running down his face. He collapsed on the ground as giant spikes emerged from his back, piercing his robe. Emerging from under the piece of cloth rose the dark Lord of Terror. Diablo had been reborn, and the warrior slash wanderer was no more. He passed through the portal to Pandemonium, leaving Bale and Mephisto behind to fulfill their plans. Mephisto stayed behind, waiting for the heroes, and Marius, still hiding behind the pillar, stared at Bale's soulstone, still hanging around his neck, and ran. He fled to Westmarch, and there he was driven to madness by the Soulstone, eventually getting arrested and ended up in the sanitarium. His body aged much faster than any normal human, thanks to the Soulstone's corrupting nature. Inside his cell, he carved the accounts of his experience into the floor of his cell with his own fingernails. The five heroes, having defeated Mephisto, went through the portal in his chamber and went to Pandemonium the battlefield of heaven and hell. The one place in the universe with constant war between the two factions. Tyrael showed the heroes and Deckard Cain the Pandemonium Fortress, the place that once housed the Worldstone, 
now located in the heart of Sanctuary. While the heroes went out on the battlefield, fighting the forces of Hell, Deckard Cain remained in the fortress. He was amazed by this foreign world and its magical properties, writing it all down in his journal. The five heroes found and fought the fallen angel Izual on the battlefield. Izual was once Tyrael's most trusted lieutenant. Long ago, he led an assault on the Hellforge and was overcome by the demonic legions. The prime evils tortured him and made him reveal some of the High Heaven's most guarded secrets. He became a corrupt shadow of his former self, a fallen angel not aligned with either Heaven or Hell. One of the secrets he gave up to the prime evils was that of the soul stones and how to corrupt them. This helped the prime evils mastermind the Dark Exile. The soul stones would be corrupted and the world stone would be corrupted through them and through the world stone humanity would fall under the dominion of Hell. After striking Izual down and releasing his spirit, the five heroes found the entrance to Hell itself. First they found the Hellforge, where they placed Mephisto's soul stone and smashed it upon the anvil, banishing Mephisto's soul from Sanctuary. And soon after, they found the Chaos Sanctuary, where they finally faced off against the Lord of Terror himself, Diablo. The battle lasted a long time, and it is unknown if all the five heroes actually survived, or how many may have died. So from now on I will refer to them as simply the heroes, to avoid inaccuracy. The heroes prevailed, with the Lord of Terror defeated. They were far better off than the heroes who defeated him the last time he threatened Sanctuary. Though some of their fellow heroes might have perished in the battle, they had to press on to the Hellforge and smash Diablo's soulstone, just like they did Mephisto's. In the sanitarium, Marius explained to Tyrael how he heard of the defeat of the Lord of Terror and the destruction of the soulstones. All but one. He starts crying and begs for forgiveness. Tyrael walks over to him and asks him for the soulstone in exchange for forgiveness. Marius revealed that he is still holding on to the soulstone, hanging around his neck. He begs Tyrael to take it, pointing to how much it has affected him in such a short time. You haven't failed, old man. You've done exactly as you were meant to do. However, I am not the Archangel Tyrael. Well, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> You have done well, Marius. Now I think you shall have your reward. now in his true form, except for the fact that Talrasha's face was still there, and with the shard of his soul stone around his neck, now called the Shard of Destruction, he starts to gather his forces, marching on the barbarian homeland on Mount Ariat. Every act of destruction committed by Bale and his minions on the way to the mountain increased the shard's power. Thus, rather than taking a stealthy approach, they slaughtered village after village before even reaching the mountain. By the time they arrived at the gate of Sesheron and Mount Ariat, his army outnumbered the barbarians in the thousands. The barbarians sent out an emissary to parley with the Lord of Destruction, but he only toyed with him for a short while before killing him and ordering his forces to attack. The barbarians fought ferociously, but they were slaughtered as Bale forced his way closer to the world stone, hidden inside the mountain. There was only one village still intact after the invasion, and its council of elders sacrificed themselves to enact a warding spell around the village to keep Bale's forces out. This is where the heroes arrive, as they intend to drive Bale's forces back into the burning hells. This time, however, the heroes who defeated Diablo have joined together with two new fighters. 
a druid, and an assassin. They drove Bale's forces back, away from the village of Haragoth, and saving many of the captured barbarians out on the battlefield. But when they returned to the town, the only elder who had survived the spell had betrayed his people. He believed his people to be doomed unless he negotiated a pact with Bale, as he provided the Lord of Destruction with the relic of the ancient in exchange for sparing Haragoth. And with a relic in hand, Bale raced up the slopes of the mountain, able to bypass the guardians of the Worldstone. And when he reached the Worldstone chamber, he fused the Shard of Destruction and all of its dark power with the Worldstone, corrupting it. The heroes had fought hordes of demons, defeated the Elder Nilothok, and even faced off against the guardians of the Worldstone. The Guardians were Nephilim, known as Madoc the Guardian, Korlik the Protector, and Talik the Defender. The Nephilim were the children of angels and demons, and these three had been called by the ancients to guard Mount Ariat, and did so for hundreds of years. The heroes emerged victorious against the Guardians and raced to the Worldstone Chamber to end Bale and the Prime Evils once and for all. Bale greets them by summoning legions of demons to distract the heroes while his Shard of Destruction corrupts the Worldstone. Just as the heroes have defeated all of his demons, he enters the portal to the chamber, and they chase after him. Bale fell after a long fight, and even though he was defeated, his mission was partially a success. The Worldstone was corrupted beyond saving, and it would destroy Sanctuary and align it with the Burning Hells. Tyrael entered the chamber. Unsure of what could happen to Sanctuary now that the Worldstone was corrupted, he decided to destroy it. And in the explosion, not only was Bale's body destroyed and his soul banished from Sanctuary, but half of the mountain exploded, leaving nothing but a giant crater. Tyrael was also caught in the explosion. But as with most angels, they do not die. They are reborn in heaven, although it might take some time. However, the prime evils were defeated. Sanctuary was safe. The prime evils were banished to the Black Abyss and from ever setting foot in Sanctuary again. We know little of what happened to the surviving heroes. All we know for certain is that the Necromancer and Sorceress survived the entire adventure. After it was all over, the Necromancer took an apprentice, and the Sorceress, known as Isendra, trained a young wizard known as Li Ming. The fate of the others are unknown. And so ends Diablo 2. Compared to Diablo 1, it doesn't leave us asking as many questions. The prime evils are defeated, the world stone is out of the picture, and Sanctuary is safe. At the time, however, we didn't know exactly how much of the mountain was destroyed in the blast, but we knew it wouldn't spread over the rest of Sanctuary. 
There are only two great evils left now, Asmodan and Belial, and we might have to deal with them sooner rather than later. We still do not know the warrior slash the Dark Wanderer's name, but the other heroes from Diablo 1 at least got some closure. I also want to add that the Barbarian in this game and the one in Diablo 3 are different people. I will provide a link in the description as proof because I'm tired <laughs> of people believing this to be true. It was intended to be the same one at first, but they changed it due to the fact that he would have to have unique dialogue with Deckard Cain and some other characters in Diablo 3, and that was too much of a hassle, so they decided to skip it. And on that note, <laughs> I've been Crane. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you all when we tackle Diablo 3.